Hello and welcome or welcome back to Bookmark Chronicles. A little while ago, Heather from Hia Booktube did a video talking about things that she would never do as a booktuber. And I really like that idea, so I'm jumping on the bandwagon. Some of these Heather also said, and others are just things that I personally don't feel like I would ever do or I don't like or whatever the case may be, starting off with writing a book. A lot of people think that because I read a lot, then that automatically means that I should also enjoy writing or that I want to write a book or that I'm eventually going to do that. I have absolutely no interest in writing a book. I took a young adult novel writing class my senior year of college as an elective and really just because I wanted to read the books that we were assigned because there were three of them. I hate writing. It's not enjoyable. I find it incredibly tedious. I don't know why people make that assumption. Being a reader and being a writer are two different things that can exist separately. And honestly, I just think it's a really weird assumption to make. But no, I, I have absolutely zero interest in ever writing a book. I don't even like writing. I didn't even like writing when I was in school. The next thing is something that I complain about a lot because I don't understand why people do this and I think people would benefit from not doing it, but feeling bad or apologizing because you take a break or you are on hiatus or you just need time away from content creation you don't need to apologize for that you have a life and for the majority of us this is not a source of income and for those that is they unfortunately do not make as much money as people seem to think they do so why are you apologizing for not making content while you were sick or for going on vacation or for taking time off for your mental health. Like, I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense to me. I also think that people just really need to realize that you don't owe strangers on the internet anything. You have nothing to apologize for. Yeah, I don't know where that comes from. Maybe just because how I am in general and how I don't really care about other people's opinions, maybe that's why that's something that I've never struggled with, but like, what are you apologizing for? Why are you saying you're sorry that you were sick and had the flu for a week? That, that doesn't make sense. Full transparency, I took a little bit of hiatus because I had to go to a funeral and then three weeks later, I had to go to another funeral. Like. I'm not going to apologize for taking time away from content creation for that. I'm not going to apologize for spending time with my family and grieving. That doesn't make any sense. So stop apologizing for taking breaks, regardless of the reason. Even if it's just because you don't feel like creating content, you don't have the energy to do so, you don't need to be sorry for that. The next one is one that really bothers me because it just feels weird to me and a lot of people do it, so perhaps I'm in the minority on that opinion, but filming myself crying, first and foremost, if I am experiencing an overwhelming amount of emotions, whether it's sadness or I don't do happy tears, so whatever, but if I'm crying for whatever reason, that just feels like a very odd moment to suddenly be like, damn that's some good content or i need to bring out my camera and film this that just feels so weird to me and then when people post those videos of them crying it just doesn't necessarily feel genuine to me because again if i am experiencing crazy emotion enough that i am crying i'm not thinking about making content i'm not thinking about showing that to people i'm not thinking about needing to prove that i cried it just feels weird to me frankly i don't I don't get it. The next is another one that, that I just don't quite understand. Well, no, I do, I do understand why people do it. They do it for likes and views and analytics and whatever the fuck. Um, but reading solely for the sake of being able to have content without actually being interested in what they're reading. That's something that I'm never gonna do. Do I sometimes read for content? Yes, but I will only do that if I'm actually interested in the book or curious about how it's going to go. For example, I was curious by the time I finished Legendborn about how the story was going to go. It completely went off the fucking rails in a direction that I was not expecting, but I wanted to see how she was going to make up for it and if she was going to fix it. She did it. So by the time we got to the end of Blood March, because of where we were and how I felt, I was like, fuck this, I'm DNFing the series, I'm not gonna keep going. Because there was potential to turn this thing around 
And instead of doing that, she just ran full speed ahead in the complete opposite direction that I thought she would. But the important part about that was that I was genuinely curious. Even when I read The Other Black Girl, as much as I fucking hated that book, I wanted to know what the twist was. I wanted to know how that book was going to end and if the main character was going to come to her senses. So to find out that that didn't happen, <laughs> and to find out that the thing that we thought happened didn't happen and she was just complicit in that whole situation was a whole different thing but I was genuinely curious I'm not going to read something that I'm not interested in I'm not going to read anything else by Sarah J Maas I read Throne of Glass because I was curious and I had never read an assassin story absolute worst one to pick up for my first because it was terrible but I was still curious and then when I got to the end and realized it wasn't worth it I stopped even with my video of giving authors a second chance, I only gave them second chances because I wanted to see if it was possible for me to enjoy their books and I chose books that sounded slightly interesting with the exception of Sarah Gailey because honestly The Echo Wife is her most interesting sounding book and that one I gave one and a half stars. But for the other authors I was interested to see if they got better and if they were able to produce something that I was interested in. For most of them they were not but then Kosoko Jackson survive the dome five stars after dnfing his first at five percent and like i said a lot of times people just end up doing that for the views and because they're obsessed with their analytics and subscriber counts and everything and that leads me to my last point i'm not going to beg people to watch my videos i'm not going to beg people to subscribe or like or comment or whatever the fuck but if you watch my videos then you know for a fact that i have never said like or subscribe in any of my videos and i never will People know how YouTube works. If they want to do those things, they will. But at the end of the day, I'm not here because I want to get 100,000 subscribers. I'm not here because I need validation from random people on the internet. I'm not here because I need other people to like me. I do this because I think it is fun because I don't have a lot of people in my real life that read. So I have been able to form a community through YouTube and through BookTok and other platforms so that I do have that sense of community and I can talk to people about books. In probably my very first video, I very specifically said that I'm not here for the views and whatever because I'm a black woman on the internet with unpopular opinions. I call out people's favorite authors for being problematic and a lot of people aren't going to want to hear what I have to say. It is what it is. You don't have to like me. I don't give a fuck. Even when I have reached certain milestones on here, number one, I've never drawn attention to them. Two, I typically ignore comments from people if they notice it and they comment on my video. And so recently, my two closest booktube friends, Robin and Dasha, both messaged me privately and were like, hey, congrats on this. And I was like, I appreciate you acknowledging it, but please don't mention it again, number one. And two, I'm really hoping that no one else notices because I genuinely don't give a fuck and people make the assumption that because everyone else on youtube cares then automatically i care too and i genuinely don't i care much more about having genuine conversations with people and being able to give and receive book recommendations that suit my taste much more than getting a certain number of watch hours or likes or subscribers or whatever the case may be that's just not my thing it never will be my thing and it is what it is so those are just some things that i personally just will never do because i don't care and because i don't want to nor do i have to so i'm not gonna but let me know how you feel about any of these things. If you agree or disagree, definitely check out Heather's video. I will have that linked for you in the cards and in the description. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.